I worry about Tiny being a disruptor. I'm a little worried about that too, but I'm also going to tell you I don't know how to make her leave. Because... I away. But it's a way of that you already gave her four hours ago. You want me to feed her? No, don't actually feed her, but that's the only thing, way I can think of her leaving. Maybe I can find some treats. You know? <sighs> I think she'll just ask you for more. Would she do that? She will. Okay, well then I guess I will But do maybe that. just something to hold her over give so her she's a, not a pain. Give pain her a pink Lamborghini. Pink Lamborghini. <laughs> she's staring at you so expectingly. <laughs> What if I walk towards you? Would I keep you away, Tiny? Because you don't like me? I mean, she would get up, but she would come back. She'll find her way back. In a pink Lamborghini. In a pink, pink Lamborghini. Eh. Hey. Um, let me try to just get her out of here, okay? Okay. Best I can. Godspeed. Hey. <laughs> that was dramatic. What you're not seeing right now with Lewis kicking Tiny out is that he's actually taking her by the scruff of the neck and throwing her out the door like Jazz in <laughs> Rush Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> Just kidding. He doesn't. Ever. All right, Troy, say something. Remember when we were supposed to have a podcast? <laughs> podcast? 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 Podcast, podcast. Welcome to episode not 37, and this is episode 38, because it is. It's of the Lemon Tea Podcast. Yes, it's one more than 37, which is what I said originally, because I was wrong. You're never wrong. <laughs> you don't agree? I don't think anyone would agree with that. Well, everybody's always wrong at some point, so technically sure. that like cancels it all out. We're all always right. I'm I'm glad we're in this together. Yes. Right? Indeed. So, so you are Tori and I'm Lewis. Yes. And this is the Lemon Tea Podcast episode right. 37 plus one. <laughs> which is something I can do now because I just took a math test, which wasn't that big. <gasps> yes, that's right. It wasn't that big. But you but I did it like hell. I did. Because even though it was something I, I had already done, like mm -hmm. I, I was taking algebra, mm -hmm. right? Which at this point I've taken three times just in your life or yes not because i didn't know what i was doing mm -hmm. i i took it in eighth grade mm -hmm. ninth grade they like fucked my transcript up from middle school to high school so i got yeah. stuck in like the regular classes in which they were doing algebra mm -hmm. so i took it again it's easy peasy though Where it was the teacher oh man I, mr pentagor was uh, <laughs> shout out shout out mr pentagor if you're still out there <laughs> Uh, he was this teacher who used to work as a manager at Publix, one of the OG giant ass food stores yeah. in Florida. Yep. And uh, he thought I was a fucking genius. I wasn't. Oh, he didn't know that you had already taken algebra before? And I wasn't going to tell him. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I no. am a genius. You're right. Yeah, because you don't want to suddenly get um, like harder math. I get you. Upset. They figured it out. They're like, your schedule was fucked up, wasn't it? And I'm like, yeah. Too late, though. No bad. I'm here and I'm comfortable. I'm here, but I'm good. Yep. You can't take me out. You'll stress me out mentally. But <laughs> And I'll jump off a bridge. Jesus. Okay. Well, glad that that didn't happen then. <laughs> Sorry. Good on you for not telling Sorry. them you're a math genius. Um, but anyway, so yeah. you, pla you passed your test with flying colors. I was competent. Colors in like this backdrop here. With this, the by lighting, I like the yeah. by lighting. Yes, me too. Uh, shout good. out to Hurricane Lee, by the way, for being a homophobic hurricane. Why do you say that? Um, because we were supposed to actually go to P Town this weekend, which is the pretty much United States gay mecca, mecca of all, yeah, of all <laughs> things gay. And Not, so I, I, I know people would have different opinions on this because they probably would say like, oh, Key West is is gay mecca. Some people would say like, okay. um, East Coast gay mecca. You think East Coast, huh? Yeah, I don't count New York in that. I can't count New York as its own, like, separate entity. So it's, like, East Coast, uh, Southern, West Coast, Midwest, New York. <laughs> Holy shit. New York's by itself. Pretty much. We'll leave its own. Because there's Broadway and the Naked Cowboy in mm -hmm. Times Square. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure he's, like, very conservative, but also... He is? But he's also... I didn't know that. Speedo. 
I don't know. You can't be too conservative on your show and everything, right? Yeah. Anyway, we're getting on topic. Um, we were supposed to go to P-Town, and uh, it got uh, usurped by Hurricane Lee. So we've deemed it the homophobic hurricane because it took away our plans for a merry time, a happy time to synonym. Hurricanes uh, here are so fucking weird. Because they don't make it to hurricanes hardly ever. I was looking this up. Um, the last time we had a hurricane here was like a decade ago, a mm-hmm. little a, a little bit more than that. Yep. Well, and I say it was called Martha, but I don't think it's right. I think it was Martha. Oh, maybe. Okay. But it went to like Vermont. Which is even stranger. Yeah. So, and usually the harder hit ones are Connecticut and Rhode Island, which are right under us. So mm-hmm. they're like our bumper and we're just like, Yo, oh, we love those little bro. bumpers. Yeah. <laughs> and we ju- we never really had like, I mean, there's never been a hurricane that's been strong enough to reach up to us. So My I wife was telling was. me that they, they rebuilt this house because it was coincidentally destroyed in a hurricane of the past. I don't see. I don't know. It could have been a storm caused by a hurricane, but I don't, mm. I don't we've never... I don't think, well, in the lifetime I know of my, at least, at most, my parents' age, we've uh-huh. never had a hurricane touch down here as a hurricane. We've gotcha. had, like, I don't know, cyclones or a tropical storm as a remnant of a hurricane. But yep. But anyway, I was, we were supposed to go to P-Town and that didn't happen. So we're going next week. Should be, right? Yeah, whenever. I mean, you guys, whenever. You guys tell us. When there's a hurricane not in the way, uh, whipping winds at a coastal town... <laughs> So, you know, what's crazy about it is, is the fact that like, I'm pretty used to hurricanes or I was, Mm -hmm. I was pretty used to it and I moved up here and I thought I'll never have to deal with this again. This, that's pretty good. Like Mm -hmm. I won't be living in fear. Florida is, yeah. Florida is crazy. Like Mm -hmm. it's just, you're going to have a hurricane at some point. Well, we haven't had them back to back or anything like that, which is good. Mm -hmm. But like. Everybody freaks out here. Everybody freaks out, right? About the idea of a hurricane? Yeah. Hmm. They're always talking about it. They're like saying this, saying that. They get all panicked, right? Mm-hmm. Not that you shouldn't prepare. I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But to me, it's just funny how it seems like it's almost over preparing here. Like, like yeah, probably to a great deal. Probably, um, which is funny because this is a state that also deals regularly with heavy snowfall, blizzards. Noistas. Noistas. Um, also, I cannot remember for the life of me if I said the name of where we live town wise. If I did, can you bleep it out? <laughs> hmm. Yes. Cool. All right. Good job. Thank you, future editor Lewis. Um, anyway, so got it. That's pretty much the biggest events happening this week for us, which were your um, supremely passed math test mm-hmm. and um, a supremely passed us hurricane. <laughs> so pretty good. Yeah. We lucked out, honestly. I mean, I'm sure there was damage somewhere. I don't know mm-hmm. where that's occurred because I haven't really like looked at a lot of the town pages and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, there's just branches, little branches everywhere for. for there wasn't like, much that was going on. I mean, yesterday was the worst of it. Yeah, so. which is nuts. Yeah, I was at work and it was like wind whipping, and I was like, oh. "It was." Are we still going to be open? Is the power going to stay on? We're we going to be so. here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. but I, I hear you. Like it. It was at its worst yesterday. Yeah. But now it's gone. It's gone. It's in the past. Um, Except for the people that it might impact. I don't know. Um, I'm not a meteorologist, so. <laughs> I look at my phone for all guidance on weather, and it's still wrong half the time. So. Um, I think they're allowed to be wrong. Eh. It's kind of in their contract. I, you must be wrong 50% of the time. It's in your contract. It's in your contract. The weather is very unpredictable, so you have that to fall back on. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I don't. I don't. Ha- I haven't heard a lot that it's horrible, horrible. So, but we'll see, I guess. But anyway, um, along actually, along with those things, our most notable event of the week was seeing another concert. <laughs> this is now a concert review channel. We don't see that many. It just happens to be that we're now doing back-to-back episodes where we've been to concerts in the same place, too, at the MGM Fenway. Yeah, that's weird, huh? Isn't um, it? I, <clears throat> yeah. That is strange. Very weird. I really like it there, though. I love that I venue. Say, yeah. Like, that might be my favorite venue in uh, Boston. I, I I think it's mine. Yeah. yeah. I like the stage, and they have the like, acoustics all right, and... <clears throat> I like the seating. I personally actually liked that their cup holders were like down. Down, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
that was really smart yeah um i like that they had a food ordering option um mm-hmm. that you can qr code with and they bring the food up to you that was neat and i like that they have a bar and those se- we had we were in proper seats this time for sure 100 ha- percent. yeah we actually had seats like actual sitting seats right yeah you scored amazing I tickets i did and i must have picked them because they were in like there's no way that i got lucky like that they were literally so we were the um the second closest to where you could be without being on the floor in the standing mm-hmm. area which was just the second row dead center like of everything like we, we could see the whole stage you right? could see everything from here yeah it was really cool i've never had that kind of viewing experience i concert. haven't either i and i've been to a lot of concerts i've been to a lot of shows and it's like i've never like i'm i'm, I'm usually either in ga standing somewhere mm-hmm. on a speed bump on a speed bump <laughs> o- outside in the rain oh yes um or in the nosebleeds in the nosebleeds or um at a bar top at some chairs <laughs> that i don't even know if they're mine too late now but too late now but anyway so we didn't even take uh say what we went to see so two bands because it was a, a double headline mm-hmm. and it was a death clock which is a virtual band from the from, from metal the show Clips. metal Long Clips, yeah mm-hmm. And then the second one is Baby Metal, which is a Japanese metal band um, featuring, I don't know what they're called, Three Girls? Yes, three. Do they have the titles or names? Um, or what? One is uh, Sue Metal, one is Moa Metal, and one is Momo Metal. Okay. Pretty neat. Um, and, and they have the little um, musicians. I forgot what they're called. The they have traveling a traveling band. Name. Yes. Yeah. But don't they have a special name for that oh, i don't remember for them see you're remembering more about baby metal than i am but anyway yes we went to go see heavy metal and j-pop metal so i think it was pretty fucking heavy like you can classify that as well the our opening act got things start, started very well shout out to yes. um jason richardson no shout out to your sign that i couldn't read for a million years that's why he had the qr code you gotta scan it and then it would tell you yeah yeah you're right i didn't scan the qr code i'm sorry about that i didn't either but i was <laughs> uh drinking a margarita so i couldn't i was i was indisposed. shout out to the bar the bar was good and they i'm were, happy there was a bar and they were great so yeah they were really great um i we kind of had been sending each other um because you were more into death clock and i more into baby metal so we were swapping songs and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I did know about Death Clock. I used to watch it on uh, Metalocalypse on Adult Swim with my brother. Um, I, I only saw maybe the first. I know I saw the first season, maybe saw part of the second season. Um, and I didn't know what songs to expect because you were showing me music from like albums I didn't even know they released. So <laughs> um, I was happy that they were playing a lot of older songs that I knew. Like they opened with the Death Clock uh, Metalocalypse theme song, which yes. I thought was great. That was wonderful. Um, and the perk of being seated where we were was that um, every single song they did was accompanied by a music video yes. that was in the show. That we could see. That we could see. Um, oh, before all of this, shout out to the person who was picking all of the songs before any acts got on. Because all of a sudden we were standing waiting to get food and I just hear yeah. cowbells and dun 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 And so I was playing the King of the Hill theme song on full blast and you just hear people just roaring in applause it was awesome the crowd loved that shit it was awesome I, it was i don't know i was like oh maybe they're doing it because it was also on adult swim and i'm like no i think they just know that people will like this <laughs> that song is goes hard it does it, it's a great song yeah it's, it's by the re- it's show. by the refreshments um how refreshing who i don't know much else about i just know them from uh, king of the hill okay. which is fine that's fair uh and mm-hmm. I tried to rationalize it too. I'm like, okay, what's the connection yeah. here? So I thought the only thing that I can come up with is that Brendan Small was probably in some way like in the know with, oh. with um, uh, what's his face, uh, Mike Judge, yeah. yeah, because you know they've had shows on Adult Swim and blah blah blah, um, and they were both in the business, blah blah blah. Yeah. So like, that's the only connection that I can come up with, but it's probably because it's great. It's a great song. People yeah, love it. If it's just for the memes, which is a funnier answer, I think. But it anyway, is. so um, that was a really great like multi because the the band it mostly were 
um, there was no lights on them. So you kind of just, your eye got drawn to the, the music video screens anyway. So it was kind of like a live, more like a live performance of the shows, I guess. Which, mm-hmm. I mean, it's what a concert is, but hopefully you know what I mean. <laughs> but, no, I know what you mean. Okay. Like a live performance of the actual TV show. Like how they have yeah. like orchestral versions uh-huh. of like Christmas, like movie songs. Or it was something. very much like that. Yeah. It's, it's like what you would have at a gorilla's concert. I've never been to a gorilla concert, but I've seen video from that the one that we were bummed out when we were driving mm-hmm. by um, TD one time um, that they were doing a concert got canceled. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, so it's not even happening. So we didn't miss anything. So that's oh, wow. good because we passed by it and we were really bummed out. And like, they had some fuck. opening act that I think you knew and liked also. So you were particularly bummed out about that. I wonder if it was Earth Gang. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yep, yep. So that it was either Earth Gang or it was Thundercat. I can't remember. No, I think it was Earth Gang. Okay. That sounds right. Um, but anyway, that concert got canceled, so we didn't miss anything. Um, but I don't know. I've always kind of liked... I think people used to really rag on like Vocaloid and Hatsune Miku and stuff, and pe- why would you go and see a virtual band? Um, We've been doing this since fucking Gorillaz, man, probably mm-hmm. before that. I don't know the history. I think that's cool. It's like a multi-faceted yeah. kind of concert. Um, remember um, uh, Paula Abdul and that cat? Oh, we're going see? way back. Mm-hmm. They were doing it back yeah, then. They sure were. Um, I think that music video is cool too. It is because <laughs> that was the '80s, where it's the time of like Who Framed Roger Rabbit and all these like more adult. I love that fucking movie too, man. That's a great movie. Um, did they ever make a second one? No. Okay, they've been talking about it doing it on and off for years, and I hope really? they never do. Yeah, but anyway, hope they don't. Um, and all of a sudden now we want to take them serious, the uh, the virtual band <laughs> seriously when we just bring back Tupac or whatever. <laughs> Remember that? That the was hologram. Weird. Yeah freaking weird they did it for a couple people i think they did for michael jackson too i think so too um but anyway it was that kind of concert to me which i really liked and especially because death clock is a you know a 2d band to begin with so i feel like maybe there would have been i don't I mean most of the people really were just caring about the music but there might have been some disconnect between like just hearing it and not having the yeah with it like I can't hear the Death Clock theme song without the zoom in on William Murderface Murderface. Murderface. I love that. And I always was annoyed with like how stiff his hair was. It's like it's not blowing in the wind like everybody else is. What is up with this or whatever? But oh man, I was obsessed with that show. Mm-hmm. Like obsessed with that show. Okay. Yeah. At first, because I went through love hate with it. Mm-hmm. At first, I'm like, this is probably like gonna be lame. Like it's gonna be like cliche and dumb. And it, I don't know. It's very smart. Like I think Brendan Small is pretty good at his like comedic timing when he does things and like yeah. when he writes jokes and stuff he's he's got the uh, humor down and uh from what we knew from home movies like in some episodes he he had i forgot oh my god in there. i forgot about that yeah so oh <laughs> I forgot like it's something he, movies. he he's always wanted to be a musician and i think it's so cool that he turned that career of like mm. being an animation and telling jokes and, and, and transitioning it into a way that he could actually do his, his like passion, yeah. his lifelong passion, which is music. So, Although like, okay, so you listen to Brendan Small as a, like a soloist more than I do. Yeah. He, his, is that his, his, da, 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 da. is the way that he sings uh, in Death Clock the same way that he sings in his solo stuff? Because I've always thought if it's like a voice yes. he just puts on, okay. I was going to say, if it's a voice he just puts on, like that really, I feel like, so he, when he's doing pain. Nathan, he's definitely putting it on like, like. But you, can, I guess I've listened to a couple that you've sent me of, of just mm-hmm. his stuff, and he seems to kind of. So, it, kind of. I'm gonna get into severe. some deep. Ooh. Shit. All okay? right, let's get into some deep. <laughs> and if I get too far into it, just just like say, hey fucker, we're trying to do a uh, podcast here. Okay, we're so doing a podcast. It. Come on. Okay. It's okay. So. Between the first death album and the second death album, there was like a notable change in the vocals. Oh, okay. Uh, in a good way. Okay. It made Nathan seem more, I think, realistic. Okay. In the terms of like how he he would sing, because I'm pretty sure the first death album, like the voice for Nathan singing was a bit like raspier, or it was raspier, but I think it was also kind of like maybe com- helped by like a computer. Oh. Or something maybe like generated. Okay. Not not generated, but it was just so modified. So modified, I think. Okay. Um in the next couple albums it's this different voice that is done entirely by uh Brendan. Mm-hmm. And um it sounds really good. Like it sounds awesome. Okay. Uh so he's got it down to a science now. He's so good. His solo stuff is called Galacticon and I think it's really great. 
Galacticon 2. So so here's what's cool. If if the movie that they put out right now for um Metal Apocalypse called like mm-hmm. Army of the the uh Doomstar. Mm-hmm. Um if the movie comes out it it may be that it's somewhat like the second Galacticon album which is like a story based album. Hmm. Cuz that was his only medium at the time for telling the the end of the story. Mm-hmm. So he put it into oh, that album. Okay. Uh and if it turns out that it's the same, I'll be really pumped. Ooh. Yes, that was the thing too is that there's a new album and a new movie coming out for Death yes. Clock. Um and this I'm assuming the movie's supposed to be like a tie uh, uh, like a nice neat tie in of a Yeah, because a, a finite ending. Yeah, because they're not doing a um a revamp of the show. Like a revamp of the show or even like a continuation of the series like that. Right. They're just getting one more movie, which I think is fair. There's been a couple of shows that have done that. Mm-hmm. Which is good. I, I like conclusions. So <laughs> It's nice to have that. Yeah. I, I think it's really cool. Um, Closure. Yeah. But the other part of this was that we went to go see a, another band that was not the opener, but the closing the band. The closing band. <laughs> yes. Baby Metal, who oh I've loved since... Um, Give me they chocolate. Were, since they started. Um, a little before that. Oh, there was stuff before that? Holy shit. I thought that was their first uh, um, single. N- one of their first. Their first single is called Doki Doki Morning. Okay, so here's I the history it. of Baby Metal. Um, and I don't remember if I have the article up for the exact name. Wasn't I there a sure white dude do. in the band at one point? No. Who the no, fuck that's was that Lady guy? Baby. Lady Baby, okay. Lady Baby, which is totally, totally not a spinoff of Baby Metal. But Baby Metal is really cool in that, like, they pretty much invented this genre, which yeah. is so hard to do in music now because mm. there's never a thing as kawaii metal. Yeah. Um, at least not for, like, maybe more than, like, one song. But this is, like, an entire <sighs> band who's re- revolved around um. So now that you kawaii say kawaii metal. metal, right? Yeah. Before you get into the history, mm-hmm. sorry. No, no, go ahead. Um, I did see a lot of people who were really enthusiastic for death clock not giving it the same regard in terms of baby metal Mm -hmm. uh and i think that sucks because i think a lot of like people who go to metal shows at some point they uh they might be a little bit like hard ass you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like maybe not trying to seem so overly feminine i mean i think baby metal's in a lot of like live tours and stuff um so and there's been a lot of heavy hitting metal artists that have been yeah. like they kick ass and they're so cool and i think rob zombie like responded to like there was some post he did for baby metal there was a couple of comments who were like you listen to that sort of junk i'm not listening to you anymore and he was like good like go away good. <laughs> i was like great yeah um i love that shit but yeah it, i mean it's always hard when it's it is a new genre that's mm-hmm. um being introduced and especially if it's an in-betweener so it's like it's pop but it's also metal so if they're performing at metal concerts but instrumentally they stack up very well to most metal acts anyway i think that you can't like you can't you cannot discount them at all because no it's it, it's kind of the same thing with like death clock where like you want to be like this is a cartoon band but then mm-hmm. it's like you listen to the music and it's like no but it's it's They're actually legit. good yeah yeah and the only thing so like the pop part just comes into the fact that there are three young girls with high-pitched voices but instrumentally it's always been metally mm-hmm. so here's Absolutely. here's the story about baby metal let's hear that shit. um so they started out in uh 2010 they've been around forever so these girls have literally like grown up with the band they're in their early to mid 20s now but they were like children when Babies. they started yes yes so <laughs> so they originally came they were originally supposed to be a one-off subunit of a japanese idol group Oh shit! So they were mo- members of a group called um, Sakura Gakuin, and um, who now they are way more famous than their <laughs> group that they came from, which is funny. And I'm g- I'm not even sure if they are still. So, and the other together. group still is around. No. Oh, they're out. They stopped. They broke up in uh, twenty, or they disbanded in twenty eleven. Damn. Um, and you go to their Wikipedia like I'm doing now. It says um for past members it says please see list of past members and it takes you to this entire list of past members because it's a graduation system oh lord so it's got like this fun little <gasps> infograph chart of all the members that have been there and there which if i have to take a 
guess number wise, it's at least 30. So I will say that chart is very pleasing to the eye. It is. It's very, like, it's very pleasing. It's very well done. But anyway, yeah, so Baby Metal was formed as just, I don't even really quite understand how they started it or because it really was just supposed to be this one off y kind of thing, which is why their opening, their beginning song, Doki Doki Morning, is like the most poppy of all of them, but it's still metally. It would just be like, the chorus is very poppy, and then it like has interludes of metal and stuff. Oh no! But, but it caught fire in like when they like on YouTube and stuff and internationally and st- um, people were all over baby metal. Yeah, they still are. But like when they first came out, like mm. uh, I don't know, like a decade or or, or more. Uh, they were like everybody was talking about them. They were so cool. And it was also cool because Japanese culture, uh, concert culture is very different from American concert culture. Sh- sure. And so like, is there any moshing? No, in Japan, no. Didn't um, think so. Maybe in like their actual, maybe like underground metal sure. circuits, but nothing mainstream. mainstream. Everybody's pretty like, um, pretty well organized. And also like, there's no constant applaud or applauding or cheering when the song is playing. It's always like they're usually waiting before the song starts or after the song ends. Sure. Whereas we just kind of scream whenever we want here. Yeah. Sometimes we throw underwear. I don't know. It's just different. Uh, I kind of like it. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's chaotic. It's like I no, and it's like the essence of metal. Like metal is sure rebellion and chaos and stuff. Um, so I don't know. I it's always funny to me when, when there's like really polite metal concerts. But there's uh, but there's moshing now at baby metal concerts. But of course they're very well organized moshes. People are like running full on in a circle and then like deciding when to come together, which I think is really funny. That's great. That was another thing too is that I I've never seen a mosh pit from a bird's eye view before. Um, yeah. There were several mosh pits it between was both acts. Incredible. And a lot of people being carried over, and I, you could tell that like baby metal were veterans in this because they didn't flinch at all. Like I think one of them was like crouching down to like wave at people, and t- five feet away, someone was being passed over to security from crowd surfing, and she's just like, whatever. Like yeah, this happens every fucking time. Yeah. Okay. But they were great and really engaging. Yeah, um, they were. They have a few songs all in English. So the lead singer Sue Metal, she was really good in hyping people up in English. She has a really nice voice. Yeah. She really does. Like. They all do. They mm. all do. But like her in particular because she gets most of the spotlight. Yeah. Because they, um, do, they do backing vocals but they're like hype girls. So. Yes. Yeah, for sure. They, I think they're great. Like That's a act that I would see again and again. They're yeah. wonderful. I was happy they played some songs I was really wanting them to. There was one that they didn't but that's fine. Um, <laughs> I got two out of three so that's good. Um, if I had to recommend any to people, not that you asked people, but I'm giving you recommendations anyway. Um, I would recommend Headbanger and also Megi Tsune and the one that they didn't play that I really like, which is Karate. Um, what Death Clock songs would you recommend to people? Ooh, so, okay. They played probably one of my favorite songs, which is I Ejaculate Fire, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which they're... is a great, great <laughs> video. Like Lyrically, it's so, like, it's poetic. Very, it's very in your face, but it is also poetic. Yeah. You said it is. Uh, so that one for sure. Mm-hmm. If you're listening to the first album hatred copter uh it's a definite listen um they they came out with a lead single uh on the first album blood Recuted, which i think is fine oh yeah i think i would listen to yeah. mermaider because that's like a established classic mm-hmm. on all of their albums yes so, uh those three there's a ton more but i yeah i don't want to they both got extensive um discographies i think yes um yeah this is a special tour because it's baby metal's first world tour and they also um are coming back from a hiatus they were on hiatus for a couple years um oh really yeah it was well they did it because a lot of their like momentum was gained from touring and stuff oh it's like yeah yeah um Mm -hmm. also a couple years prior one of the third hype girls had left so Momo Metal isn't original to the band. She just came on this year. Oh, shit. She's originally from their J-pop group, but she also, I found out, was from a K-pop survival show. Oh, no! The fire alarm's going off. <laughs> That's because Ruby... Uh... You guys have the same problem in this house as you did your other house. <laughs> yeah. Overly sensitive fucking fire alarms. You can do it! <laughs> oh, your sound waves are awesome. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> Take it out back and shoot it. Yay! <laughs> the evil has been Sorry. defeated. That's okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we 
We're just gonna wait for a second. And see. Yeah, it's gonna okay. give it a second. Okay, you're gonna have a lot of fun editing this. Let's chop it right out. All right. It comes right out. I do remember what I was talking about. So. You talking about Momo Metal? Yes. Yes. So Momo Metal, she's originally from a K-pop survival group and didn't make the cut, obviously. So she kind of like went back to Japan and said, "Hey, heard you're looking for a third person." I don't think she really said that, but. Hey. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so she's brand new. I don't. You really wouldn't know it though from how she performed. There's a lot of choreography involved in this, which is the pop aspect also of Baby Metal. Yes, um, th- they're highly choreographed. I loved the bits where they were like pretending to be disoriented and like wobbling around the stage. Mm. Yeah, but it was also yeah. very coordinated. Um, yeah, they had some really cool moves and um, a lot of props. I loved the flags. I loved the uh, mask that was used <laughs> for Megi Tsune. Um, and they're all just so cute. <laughs> they're just adorable. They are definitely adorable. And I love that they, um, there's a lot of interviews where they like really do their research on metal groups and stuff like that. And they really become like immersed in the metal culture, which considering how they were starting out as like schoolgirl dressed J-pop idols, like it's really funny, this turnaround, but they've gotten immense They had a success. character arc, okay? It's, they really did. They're... Now they're the fucking goddesses of metal. All hail the fox god. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they got a whole lore. Like, their intro on the screen, like, they had graphics more than, like, anything really animated. But um, their intro of, in a, a long time ago. In a long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> kind, of, kind of that sort of thing. Yep. So they have a whole lore, which metal is also very, like, concept and lore based also. Yeah, yeah. No, it's. So it fits right in with that. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's rock for nerds yeah and sue metal's mic was on as the kids say um she's i mean they all sang live but she's the lead singer and so she sounded really great and i'm so stoked that i got to see a baby metal concert finally after 13 years <laughs> yay <laughs> so it was very fun thanks for coming and and thanks for uh for giving uh death clock a fair shot too it was I, awesome i i listen i i know them <laughs> i did yeah. listen to them before i didn't cool Stop because I dislike them. I, they just fall no, on my radar. No, I just appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. I like when people can be open about things like that uh, because... Yeah, I liked your recommendations for the things that didn't end up getting played, but things I hadn't fine. heard before. Um, yeah, that the the Death Clock portion was actually really great because it reminded me of a lot of songs I'd forgotten. Like, I loved Awaken. I completely forgot it existed. And then it played. And I was like, oh my God, this song is so good. And then, it's a great song. And then the chorus came out. I'm like, oh my God, I know this song. So... That was awesome to kind of relive. <laughs> the, it's yeah. been a while. I don't know. It has. Um, considering how graphic some of the graphics were for Death Clock, though, I mean, I think it's I think it's just funny that Baby Metal is paired up with them to do this tour. It was so funny. There was like, a voiceover thing that was like, "Sorry for the ba- baby, uh, <laughs> baby, be- baby metal fans out there for <laughs> our graphics." I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's what it is. I loved Face Bones too. We didn't talk about Face, face Bones. Face Bones. Mm-hmm. There was this, oh my god, there was this part where he's like, know your limits when you use alcohol and, like, drugs. Yeah. Uh, Face Bones was our intermission uh, concert etiquette reminder person, entity. One was about, like, B.O. (laughs) B.O. And if you can't smell it on anybody around you, it's probably you. (laughs) It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that like three minute montage of Face Bones being tripped out of his mind on drugs. It was like so weird. Like what the fuck? Yeah. So weird. Um, my brother used to go to um, heavy rock or metal shows. Um, and he estimates that he's broken his nose at least like three times from that. He still has a tank top that he proudly owns that has like old dried blood on it. <laughs> like some badge of honor. <laughs> so weird. But um. I don't know. He swears, swears they're really fun, I guess. But I was looking down at that mosh pit uh, at the concert. And I'm like, I don't think even when I was younger, I could have ever wanted to do this ever. I accidentally ever. got into a mosh pit once. Oh, shoot. When? I went to go see a Cody Camry show. Oh, so recent? No, this is nope. like, oh, man. Oh, shit. I never told you this. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't. Okay. Maybe you have. What? what when was this? I don't remember exactly when. They we went to a concert. Out of you. <laughs> yeah. It was probably like 2012, 2013, like pretty. Wow. Okay. Like a decade. Uh, I went to a show. Days. Yeah. Yeah. And we got in early because I had early passes and they played like an acoustic set. Oh, nice. Really cool. Right. Mm-hmm. So we got the prime standing position because there was no seating in the venue. 
Was this the speed bump one or a different one? No, okay. different one. Got a lot of Kohi concert experiences. I do. I go, I go to them like once a year. Uh, Christmas. Yeah. So. So standing. So we were standing. Mm-hmm. We were in general admission because it only it was the only thing that All existed. Four. Yeah. We were at the very front, and we said, "Holy shit, we're like at the front of the stage. Like this never happens." Yeah. Right. Never happens. Okay. Mm-hmm. Where we were standing, I didn't know this. It was right where the fucking mosh pit would be. All right. Ah, in the middle. I don't remember where we were. Mosh pits are usually in the middle. It seems if if you don't want to be in a it mosh was, pit, you stand off to the side. I thought I was near the front of the stage, but you get sucked into the mosh vortex. Y- yes. So we're standing there. We're having a good time. They're about to come out. They're playing like their opener song. It's this really hype fucking song, and then it slams into the fucking distortion, right? <laughs> And I get fucking ejected from the planet, right? <laughs> I get boom, boom, boomed off of the planet, okay? A decade prior. Oh, no. My glasses. Oh, no. Fucking gone, okay? <laughs> gone. I am I am being passed around like a fucking beach ball at a Nickelback concert, okay? Oh, my God. All right? What a visual. <laughs> I didn't come up with that. I stole that from somebody. I don't remember Ah, who. you could have kept it. I would have believed you. I, I'm not taking credit oh, for that. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, you were getting pissed around. But. Like a joint at Woodstock. Ooh. Hey. See, you, you that one I came up with. That was great. Thanks. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so anyways, I'm I'm not a big guy. All right? I'm not. Mm-hmm. Okay? And I, I'm bigger now than I was then. But I was, I'm not big. Mm-hmm. So I'm going through it. One of our friends, mm-hmm. I won't say uh, her name. She was with me. Mm-hmm. She had to muscle me out. <laughs> oh, no. She had to wrangle me like a fucking fish on a hook, <laughs> dude. The glasses, gone. Can't find them. They're not there, okay? that's. Did you get out unscathed otherwise? Like clothes were still in- intact or face not punched or no? No, I think I had like some bruises and shit. Oh, but okay. No, I was in that shit. Like I got pushed, okay? Oh, my God pushed damn yeah i god that yeah i know you didn't put yourself in there willingly but i could never i could never do that i just want to see the show like i'm in awe right. watching them on stage yeah. like i i really get absorbed into it right yeah i don't have time to fight somebody like <laughs> <laughs> leave me like, alone i'm trying to look like i just like want to i want to have fun yeah and that does not seem like a good time to me now i get it's about the energy yeah and I get it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You're just like a pacifist when it comes to concert energy, by comparison. I Glasses are expensive. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can't afford to get new glasses when I go to a show every fucking time. Did so. you ever, you never found them? I never found them. Oh, no. I never found them. And I came home to Ashley <laughs> and I had to tell her like, It's yeah. not my fault. <laughs> Don't be angry, but like <laughs> angry. my glasses are gone. She's like, "Where are your glasses? You leave them in like the oh, that's another thing. We took a limo. Um, Ooh, fancy, fancy. Did you leave them in the limo? I'm like, no. What a question to ask. No, I, I was uh, <laughs> I was in the pit. I lost them in the pit. Oh my god, said it hardcore like yeah, that. Yeah, huh? I lost them in the pit. <laughs> no, it was more like. I was accidentally in the mosh pit and they fell off. Oh, just like a yeah. like a regretful headache yeah. and uh, yeah. So I got new glasses, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I never had glasses again. <laughs> Some say you can still feel them. <sighs> it's like they're right here. Mm. Ah, but yeah. I'm in the pit. <laughs> Shout out to people who dare to go in the pit, uh, uh, whether they want to or not. I guess. I'm glad you made it out, and I'm glad that you got new glasses. <laughs> and you didn't have to go to Japan to get them. <laughs> <laughs> Start for another time. Oh, it sure is. Oh, yeah. We should have a Japan reminiscing episode. Yeah, we talked about that. We should. We should. But in the meantime, um, I want to talk about <sighs> what? What do I want to talk about? I want to talk about. Oh, I know. Um, it's mid September. Sure. Why are there Christmas decorations in my local big lots? A segment here on Lemon Tea Podcast. Why do you um what why do I want to talk about this? Why do you hate fun? Okay, like people have already decided that Halloween's its whole month, which 
it's Halloween is something that's tied into fall well, anyway. When does Halloween be- uh, begin for you? <laughs> October first. <laughs> Okay. It's when I decorate my house, so. Sure. And, like, I decorate my house to kind of be set up for the month. Like, 4th of July, you're going to see 4th of July decorations in my house until August 1st. Like, that's just how it goes. I'm too lazy to change the second holiday end. Sorry about it. So. Sorry, not sorry. Pretty much. Sorry, not sorry. So, um, and that's fine. But it's, like, we can't even let Christmas be, like, it's supposedly Christmas starts, like, on Black Friday. That's pretty much when people, I think, that's, consider it to be Christmas time. It's, like, well, we got Thanksgiving out of the way. Um, Thank God we got that done. But I think it's so obnoxiously weird on a consumerist level, not even on a, uh, like a, a cranky boomer shakes fist at cloud sort of way for me. But I think it's obnoxious that like they're trying to push holiday stuff so early. It's very weird. Um, well, you know. Yeah. We're in a recession. So right. what we need is to resuscitate the economy by spending money. Okay, what about right now. raising the minimum wage? What about providing benefits? What about um, reducing the cost of fast food? I see you, McDonald's. Bring your dollar menu back, you cowards. For real. For real, for real. Um, <sighs> we can't do that, so instead we're just going to push holiday <laughs> stuff on people in mid-September. It does. All right, this is a very, very it's... boomer thing to say, okay? Okay, go ahead. It does feel like it gets earlier and earlier every year. It really does. And it's also sort of a weird, like, not being able to read the room thing because people our age and younger and also even, like, older Mm -hmm. love Halloween now. Halloween's, like, the second most, I think, anticipated holiday, whether it's for decorating or being, like, in a festive mood for. So to not be able to read the room and push Halloween stuff right now in September when it is normally pushed out and to instead just sideline it and go straight to christmas when people literally could not care until halloween's over seems like very do you think people in our generation and i mean like around our age range or so Mm -hmm. do you think that they um would say halloween would be the first like the most anticipated holiday i think so and Mm -hmm. i think the one maybe the two reasons why would be that it's kind of sort of it's not tied into religion yeah and it doesn't require family to celebrate for those yeah. despondent um yeah it's folks. it's usually very it's just a fun holiday it's, it's very not fun like, it's and like, you don't have to get gifts for people too so it's economically like nope. a really great holiday <laughs> whether the companies who run these stores want to see it that way or not and you get to dress up as something racist okay well no not that last part my culture is not your costume there is some <gasps> <laughs> i've caught i posted that with some guy, some health guy, who was like, if you get a pumpkin spice something at uh, Dunkin' Donuts, okay. Okay. it has 42 teaspoons of sugar or something yeah. like that. It's like, that's great. It is insane. It is insane, but also, like, A, you should just not drink it, and B, there's so many other sugary things anyway. I don't know. It's just It was just a strange thing, so I made some joke about my culture is not your PSA or something stupid. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Let's stop doing um, culturally insensitive costumes, please. I think it's... There's really no excuse for it now anyway. No, like, I don't know. It's 2023. <sighs> if you're still thinking, I'm going to go and be a Mexican and wear a sombrero with, <laughs> with a fake mustache, then that you need to get a better internet connection, I guess. I don't know what to tell you. So <laughs> It is usually the fucking Mexican one, too. It's Mexico. That's like the one. Um, it's like jive 1970s yeah. black man with the afro or like soul singer i guess also with an afro it's mostly those yeah. i don't see a lot of like i mean there's ninjas but those are like all you need to like i that i feel like that one's different because you're not you're it, you're not <laughs> exploiting a cultural like thing or mm-hmm. like you're literally covering covering your face it's basically like the best covid costume you're covering your mouth take that covid yeah but yeah and fucking the whole, covid the whole not thing even real weird. the whole thing is weird and then there's also like those like just like culturally i mean not like like traditional culture but like pop culturally insensitive costumes that come out um boy i can't think of any right now the one i think of is actually when um johnny depp played tonto in the lone ranger movie and so they made a costume halloween costume based on that 
the weird huh. non-native american characterization <laughs> of a native american character and they were like you know what party a city needs some tonto costumes oh yeah he was in that movie huh yeah fuck yeah so but anyway um i guess that my point is just like read the room and let halloween be halloween i guess people are wanting to have it be a two-month thing um and let them there's not as much shopping for it so it's not like stores are crowded like they are for christmas time where you're trying to find gifts for everybody right um like whatever like i said whatever they're spending would be spending for like christmas gifts they're spending on halloween decorations right and candy for themselves for the, their neighborhood children um the choice is theirs so sometimes for me i agree i think it's a better <laughs> holiday and i think uh i don't know I, we're just kind of over the whole like buying gift shit you know what yeah I mean? like it's uh, it's harder too because we're poorer <laughs> we're poorer we don't have a lot of money right mm -hmm. and also like everything costs so much obviously yeah and it's i don't know it's just very fickle it's like <laughs> yeah so it's like when i see christmas trees at big lots in mid-september do does that make me want to be in a christmas mood and buy christmas stuff no it fills me with existential dread it's of like, the upcoming God. holiday let me live in peace in <laughs> halloween town and then we'll talk halloween town just wait. Put it up in November like everybody else. November 26th. Or not 26th. Uh, Whatever 20th day. Black Friday. Yeah. Do you Black Friday shop these days or do you just kind of wait till Cyber Monday? No. Um, I went Black Friday shopping once. It was painful. Did you go like ironically or because you actually were getting something? I think we were actually getting something that was on sale that I oh. really okay. wanted to get. I remember you i remember this yeah and we were standing in line with another friend of ours and it was fucking cold it and was fun really fact, cold out. um massachusetts um i think they changed this now even more but but back then massachusetts black friday did not start at midnight it started at no. 1 a.m you yeah. just had to stand there an extra hour and for what <sighs> to freeze but i think now there's i don't think it's i don't know if it's like a statewide thing but i know most places don't open until 6 a.m now yeah because luckily um we're not making people work during thanksgiving which is a fam family holiday like i'm so sorry martha if you needed your pumpkin pie from walmart everybody's going home working black friday in retail mm -hmm. always made me just just cemented the idea that retail was not for me was this what job was this for uh Home Depot. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. Um, what kind of Black Friday stuff was going on in Home Depot? Tools and shit. Just really? like shit's on sale. They would like bring in fucking like stuffed animals and put them in the aisles and shit. Like, yeah. like Why? Because there's oh, Christmas. Oh, to buy? Yeah. You guys sold stuffed animals? Only for fucking Black Friday. I thought you were talking about like customers were bringing in stuffed animals. <laughs> in the aisle, no, no, no. Which somehow made like more company. sense to me than, yeah, we just had end caps of teddy bears. Like that We is did. Weird. That is weird. Did they at least like have Home Depot smocks or something on them? No. They were fucking just regular ass teddy bears. What the hell? All right. Yeah. It's so weird. Just just so they can capitalize on that Christmas shit. Yeah. And so that's another thing. Like let workers in retail stores have Thanksgiving so they can mentally and physically prepare for Black Friday. Mm hmm. Like, do you want your employees to stay? This is how you get employees to stay, especially because no one wants to work anymore. I wonder why. But anyway, um. Hey, so PSA that no company is going to listen to ever. Please do not put up your Christmas stuff until at least October 31st. When I was working retail. Yeah. We would get all the Christmas shit in around October. Which is which makes more sense to me than September. It makes more sense, especially uh, for retail. They have to prepare, right? Mm -hmm. But I always thought like, holy shit, they're putting it up now in October. Like, I thought it was strange. And here we are in September and we're seeing it. I've heard Christmas music already, too. No fucking way. I'm like, where? What is your problem? Um, I forget. I don't remember. It wasn't Big Lots. And it wasn't Walmart. It was somewhere smaller. I just remember hearing Have a Holly Jolly Christmas. It's like, like three Christmas it's songs, man. August. What do you mean? Holy what do you mean, shit. Holly Jolly Christmas? I would like a Holly Jolly Labor Day. I don't know. Um, yeah, you cause, take that. Because August is the only month yeah. with no federal holidays but anyway makes it seem like the longest month of the year by comparison to the others for that reason um 
But yeah, I, I, it makes no sense. Like, push out. Halloween Town's popular again. It's basically the new Christmas story. So, like, push that merchandise out. Do you want to, like, lose shelf space to twerking Santas? No. Just put out what you know is going to sell. <clears throat> Is Halloween Town pop, uh, popular? Yeah, they did a remake movie, which they released on Disney Plus, which I I have, but I haven't seen it. Basically, because <coughs> there's some like movies with sequels or like remakes decades after that I'm like, I know this isn't gonna hold up. And Halloween I, Town absolutely will not hold up. And I don't want they got all the original act uh, actresses for the witches, I guess. But I I know I don't want my first Halloween Town. Um, that's not what it's called. Hocus Pocus is what I'm talking about. Did you know what I mean? Meant. No, I thought you meant Halloween Town. No. Well, Halloween Town did actually have two sequels. Uh, Hocus Pocus was what I was talking about. But uh, <laughs> I would love a Halloween Town reboot, actually, even though the third one was kind of mid. But I never were, saw it. Yeah, there were three of them. But <laughs> I saw the second one. Yeah. That one was okay. Calabar's Revenge. Calabar's Revenge. Um, but anyway, no, no, no. Sorry. So the whole time I was ta- meant to uh, say Hocus Pocus. Okay, They yeah. made the second one, and they put it on Disney+. Plus, and did I didn't... it suck? N- no, that's what I'm saying. Is like okay. I knew even if it was good, it was never going to hold up to like my love of the original. <laughs> Uh, so, cause that was like the nineties where Disney was making movies where you could kind of slip in like actual teenage rebellion or like slipping in a couple curse words and stuff. And it wasn't so sanitized, I guess. So I kind of liked mm-hmm. that grittiness. And it was also like, everybody's like skater bro kind of in this like podunk, not podunk, but this podunk area of Salem. Um, what's up, man? My name is Johnny Tsunami. <laughs> oh my God. I love Johnny Tsunami. <laughs> I love DCOMs, man. Bring back old DCOMs. But anyway, um, yeah, if they ever made a new another Halloween Town, I don't know how they would. They ended the third one pretty like, but it's met it's middling. So you don't if you only have seen the first two, then that's a that's enough. Um, yeah, but but Hocus Pocus for me, like, I just know there's also a second Christmas Story movie for some reason, and I've heard actually yeah, that's doesn't terrible. that suck though? Yeah, so sometimes although with um the writer's strike, mm-hmm. I mean. There's already obviously a good chunk of movies in post production. Like I think we'll still be getting a regular flow of new movies until maybe like I don't know. I would say maybe like spring, late spring. Cause, okay. Because some movies take years to make and stuff. Um, TV shows will be affected more quickly because they don't take years to make and they have to be out pretty quickly by just them being something that's syndicated and have to air weekly. Um, so we'll probably see this horrible influx of like reality television shows. <laughs> but wait a second. But wait a second. So that kind of leads into another topic you wanted to talk about, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I guess so, huh? What would that be? Yeah, sorry, I should have been taking a drink when I was talking about the topic. No worries. Um, so the writer strike has been going on. Well, it's this um the WGA and SAG after strike which is basically just the the actors portion and the writers portions of these um unions in Hollywood um and they're asking for reasonable things and not getting a reasonable response or reasonable counters from companies um so they have been on strike for now 3 or almost 4 months and it's affected uh, the only s- immediate effect is just that like no movies are really being produced and that um, like certain companies have to get special permission and so A24 and I think AMC both have permission to make movies um, and I'm not sure if it's just like they they adhere to the terms of the negotiations that the strikers want A24 is also like more indie so I think maybe oh, maybe they're not yeah, Probably I don't know that. what their exemptions are, but they did, like, legally go through and get permission, so they're not just doing it to be, like, mm-hmm. mean. So you can be in an A24 movie or production, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the other caveat I've seen, or the repercussion I've seen from this immediately is um, actors aren't able to promote their movies re- mm-hmm. really regularly. Like, <clears throat> Comic-Con this year famously did not have any actors pr- or directors promoting movies. It was mostly, like, production kind of people and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually they have actors talking about, like, I'm sure there would have been people for, like, Blue Beetle or, like, other movies, like, nerdy movies and stuff. Um, but they couldn't because of the strike, so. Um, but there is apparently also an exception to this strike besides, like, getting special permission and um it has a it has to do with like live tv shows kind of like the view or just talk shows and stuff okay 
So it's um let me find the thing. But anyway, <laughs> I'm not as prepared as I thought I was. That's okay though. Um it's the Drew Barrymore show and also Jennifer Hudson um has a talk show too, but Drew Barrymore has been in the center of a lot of controversy because she has decided that her show is going to resume filming um her talk show and um she it says that she's a um not in violation of the current strike rules because the syndicated daytime show is covered by a different sag after a contract um than the one in, dis in dispute which then this covers talk shows game shows variety shows and soap operas um so basically things that are kind of like cheap to make and that you output immediately like things that don't really need like heavy writing or producing and stuff like i guess soap operas maybe but um, bet anybody to be able to tell me a cohesive storyline from start to finish of the show's, like, inception, uh, of any soap opera. You can't. So, maybe you can. I don't know. Okay. But anyway. Let's go. Um. Days so of our lives. Oh. <laughs> no, I have no idea. I have the no idea. The only soap opera I remember, there's two of, I think they're the same one, is General Hospital, which is still ongoing. My grandmother used to watch that. General Hospital, which had, um, Kirsten Storms, Xenon. Oh it. my god, Xenon. And it also had this like kind of Italian, like sleeked hair, like leather jacket looking guy named Sonny. Um Sonny was a fucking staple though, man. Yep. yep. Oh, so he's, yeah, that's how he's probably he's probably still on the show. That's how famous he he is, even to non real soap opera watchers, is just Sonny, the slick backed hair motor uh maybe motorcycle rider. He was know. cool. He was the cool, like, bad boy, and then he became like a really cool, like grandfatherly figure or something like because he got older but anyway yes shows like that so we're gonna be seeing that's why i said we're gonna be seeing a lot of more reality shows game shows things that really if they're like kind of competition based or only rely on like the interaction of two people like an interviewer and an interviewee um and the news obviously that's not affected by it sure so not as many scripted shows um but people are still calling Drew Barrymore a scab because um, apparently her she does have writers for her show. I guess there's not a lot because it's just a talk show. She has three of them. And they were striking at the time that they found out that that show was coming back on the air. Because they are striking um, as part of the Writers Guild. Um, they were so striking? They're, no, they're still striking. They're still striking. Yeah. So okay. when they found out that the show was coming back, they were striking. And they were like, well, that's kind of shitty. Yeah. yeah. So, because I'm assuming they weren't asked back or even if they wanted to go back, they can't still because nothing's changed. So, people are saying that Drew Barrymore is not standing with the writers by continuing to, to do the show despite uh, it not being what's in dispute. Because her writers aren't coming back to this. And so, um, I actually found out about this happening because she was meant to host um, the National Book Awards at, in my library. It was library gossip, which is always the Ooh. best kind of like gossip between like library goss banned books or someone trying to kill salman rushdie or whatever it's been an exciting year for authors authors um yeah. so yeah i guess the national book award rescinded their invitation for drew barrymore to host the award show in solidarity with the writers because you'd be surprised how many movies come from books like there are some that i don't even realize come from books <laughs> there's a lot sure so um keep your eye out for the next colleen hoover movie um <laughs> Because that's going to be a thing. Keep your eye out. With Blake Lively for some reason. We should. But anyway. Um, so, yeah, they t rescinded her hosting um, invitation. And I didn't watch it because I still haven't watched, like, the Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis apology video for Daniel Masterson. You probably won't, right? I might watch it through Moist Critical because mm -hmm. you said that was the best way to watch it. And that's how I've watched several cringy things is, like, in bite-sized pieces while he's saying what i'm feeling like yeah. that's how i watched the colleen ballinger thing um <sighs> that one was really rough too here here's an idea let's just stop making apology videos especially when it's so clear that your heart's not in it so mm -hmm. like drew barrymore's heart might have been in it but she made an apology video which was like four minutes long or something and i didn't Fuck. watch it um but the one quote tweet i saw um about it was like um we get it we could have done with that three minutes of like your heavy sighing and sniffling or whatever it's like is she crying in it? I don't know because I didn't watch oh, it. Oh, no. Um, I think she was maybe emotional about it. But also mm. she has justified coming back by saying that she wanted to give her production crew like jobs again. But also she's rich. Like she could 
paid them without having to go against the good faith of her writers. Mm -hmm. It's not like she's hurting for money. It's like she's not. So it's just a little weird that she's like, I wanted to give them jobs again. Meanwhile, there's reports of um, outside of her studio, some of the strikers were striking just outside the studio, not specifically for Drew Barrymore. And two members of the audience had been given uh, WGA pins and um, they were asked by security to take them off before they like sat in the audience and they didn't so then they were like escorted out which is really and they called it like unforeseen circumstances that like was uh you know that seems like a threat to the audience or whatever it was like some weird crap um how fucking crazy so it's like she's being kind of really tight-lipped about it when she wants to be which also kind of seems condescending and like Jennifer Hudson also is one of these people, and then Bill Maher, you said right? Yeah. Bill Maher. His, How do you say his name? I think it's Maher. Bill Maher. Um, he's coming back with his show too. I think he's just forging ahead, and he's acknowledged that it won't be as good. Yeah. Hmm. Without the writers. How about that? It won't be as good. Well, it, it was not good anyways. Oh, I mean, like okay, you know, well, like, okay. It was uh, never good. I mean, like just with having no writers, but so all three of them are doing talk shows, and yes, it's not technically like what is part of this whole dispute, but it if it's most every show requires a writer um so i would be hard pressed to find any writers who are sympathetic and being like yeah i understand they have to do the show because it seems kind of yeah no it's kind of scummy i guess but and also jennifer hudson is also not hurting for money and bill maher probably isn't i don't know no he's not so i so it's just it's weird to justify it for one aspect of your crew that you're coming back but while also screwing over the other part of your crew just because there's less of them because it's a talk show or whatever. It seems weird, but... A lot of people that I heard, like, in conversation, just going out in public, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've heard people talk about this situation, and it's like, they don't seem to understand the people that are actually striking. Mm -hmm. And the people that they think are striking are, like, the movie stars. Like... No. And some of them are... Well, yes, yeah. In solidarity. Yeah. But, like... I don't know. It's not going to be anyone that's that's top bill out there striking for the most part. You think so? The I, Margot Robbie was out there. That's great. Yeah. I guess like top top. I guess maybe it would be like Tom Cruise or whoever. But yeah, but he's um, not. He's not striking. But I don't know. It just seems. I mean, it would be hard for them to make movies anyway. Without this is the writers. So yeah, this is for the small time actors. Mm hmm for one and it's also for the writers that that don't generally get paid much anyways Enough, yeah so it I, like like i said before on here i've heard their demands and they're not asking for really much at all they want like health insurance <laughs> it's weird that they're like the companies are being so against this really simple thing because like yeah i saw this video of like bob Iger being like it's just not the time for this it's like as opposed to what time? Yeah, what time is... Oh, no, sorry, guys. We'll reconvene back in March. That's the right time. The guy who's, like, giving himself, like, these extravagant bonuses, like, millions and millions of dollars in a bonus. Their money's being made off of, like, shows and movies and writers. Like, you gotta know who helped you get to where you are. And not be like, we won't be able to financially meet their requirements. Meanwhile, they make, like, eight-digit salaries yeah like stupid amounts of money sometimes that that's a bonus for them making myself a bonus for having no writers go me yeah. so yeah the whole thing's dumb i keep seeing surveys where people are polled about whose side they're on and well usually overwhelmingly it's on the writer's side and everybody just wants the strike to end because like why mm -hmm. is it being held out for so long um from what i read before the strikers gave a list of their demands the studios had countered it and then the writers had countered it back and they haven't heard word for about a month now from the studios for whatever reason. So, so Drew Barrymore is a shitlord or something? Scab. Okay. That's the word I've seen thrown around. But Jennifer Hudson is too. And basically, I guess anybody who's doing a talk show, like I said, I understand it because mm. they're not having their writers come back on to do the shows for them. So it's sort of like, what's the point? Um, a lot of the um, network like talk show hosts have come together to do like a podcast. Yeah, sure. Do a podcast. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Perfect. So they're just, I don't know what they're doing, but like, it's like Stephen Colbert and 
Jimmy Fallon. Oh, okay. All those other fucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those other guys. Yeah. And there's an argument, too, that these shows coming back is going to make the strike go longer because it's showing that, like, shows can go on without the writers. Which is obviously not what they want. It won't. Not as well. Mm -mm. I really do feel like um, people are going to be tuning out of these returning talk shows. Just syndicate shows. Like, Judge Judy has not had a new episode since she did she left that show or she isn't doing judge Judy anymore she's doing judy justice on amazon prime and has been since 2022 and her episodes are syndicated all the time judy not not hurting for money either no no she's the richest tv judge Shit. um and rightfully so good for her love me judge judy uh <laughs> love me some judge judy i um but just syndicate stuff people have also been saying like this would be a great way for me to catch up on shows I haven't been able to watch with the um, if if new content dies down. Yeah. Syndicate stuff. Mm -hmm. Do it. Do it. That's my suggestion. Also pay your writers. But anyway. So I, yeah. I would start there. We're just starting. We're starting small. Pay your writers. Pay, pay your writers. <laughs> so that's what I've got for that. Um, read books also. You'd be surprised how many of your favorite movies were once books. A lot of movies or books. It's always surprising to me when we get like a uh, suggestion from our uh, algorithm per book purchasing website that says like it's a it's a movie tie in version of this book and it's got like the stupid movie poster. I hate books with the movie posters. I hate them. They're so obnoxious and they look so stupid and I hate them. Um anyway <laughs> um do you hate them i do but then people are treating them like it's also because the movie tie and people are realizing like oh this was based on a book and so they want that book the one that in the title says movie tie in usually mm -hmm. but it's like we already have them they're right there they just don't say movie tie in and they don't have this stupid poster as a cover and preach people are like no no no, no. that's this one's different <coughs> it says the movie cover on it okay all right that's fine so and it's also a, an a annoying note for me is it's got its own separate isbn yeah um because there's like added make author oh notes or yeah whatever. that is annoying i the last book that i purchased yeah that was like that was the hobbit and mm -hmm. that was right when the movie was made oh my god the tolkien books are the worst because they all have different isbns like all the time one's like one with tolkien's uh, un undiscovered notes and one with illustrations so it's not actually the same yeah then, then there's the movie tie-in ones of those two and they are all different like if you search it on a library catalog they're all different entries because i can't make them all the same because they have different isbns i would if i could isbn yeah. and bti <laughs> wga <laughs> sag, -Aftra. sag -Aftra. <laughs> Bob Saget. Um, <clears throat> Bob Saget. But but yeah, so anyway, that's my little rant on books and movie book covers. Please try to find the originals because the cover art is 99% usually really great. Um, Yee. Yeah, that's my book rant. Anyway, um, support writers. That's that's my end cap for that. That's a good end cap. I think so. As a, as a someone with a writing degree. I think it's a great stance to have. So, a writing degree is pretty cool. It's always so funny because I was originally majoring in creative writing, mm -hmm. and my advisor was like, "You know, if you just took these two classes, you could also get apply for an English degree too." And I said, "Oh, perfect!" So I have a dual major, um, and it's really funny that there's only a two class difference between the two right. majors. <laughs> so it's like, what's the difference? Like, I don't, I don't understand. That's awesome. Yeah, um, but it's also kind of because I used to get more like, what are you gonna do with that from like family members or whatever? If I said I'm gonna gonna major in creative writing, if I at least say I'm majoring in English, people all I'm automatically assume, oh, you're gonna teach or something like that. But do you ever find it like really ironic that you, um, you know, like went the first couple years of your life like not really saying much or speaking? Yes, <laughs> sure <laughs> and do. Now, and now you're like that is your major yeah it's my major and yeah isn't it ironic that i've got a major in something that requires a lot of 
outward expression mm -hmm. uh and then also had a youtube channel and then also i'm doing a podcast and then also decided to go for a second english related major in my master's yeah you know life finds a way <laughs> i guess that's pretty cool yeah so hey. um so yeah that's what i've got about that how are you doing i'm great you're great i'm doing great um, thank you I am for asking not to call you up, but I'm I'm been distracted by your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle like, uh, like lime green slime socks. green socks, which are awesome, but they're like so bright, it's so funny. They are very bright. Fashion. Mess they look socks. like uh, <laughs> no, they they. <laughs> Don't show your feet for free. No, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> what I'm saying is. Yeah, they got all the turtles. Yeah. There should be um, they should have had Splinter on the other side. They should have. Maybe the next They really missed an socks. opportunity. They really did. But. But. <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Thank you for complimenting the socks. Absolutely. It's really nice. Uh, they kind of look like Sky Zone socks. I like, I still have my, I only went to Sky Zone maybe two times and I kept both the socks. They're like. Yeah, they're green. Yeah, they. Like neon green. Oh, no. Mine are older. Mine are orange. I forgot they do green now. Oh. I might be thinking they're of the orange. other trampoline park then. Oh. They have green ones. Oh, they're like, yeah, no, we can't do orange. Uh, Someone else is already doing that. That it's shit's taken. Yeah. We gotta do green. They're basically like what older people wear too, yeah. like elderly people. So if they don't want to wear shoes yeah, the, in the house, but they want to have the grip? a grip, yeah, grips yeah. on the on the feet. Yes. Shout out to those socks. They really have saved me a couple times. I've I've <laughs> nearly ate shit from falling and been like, whoa, whoa, let me get my grips out. <laughs> okay, we're Got good em. now. But anyway. <laughs> yeah um yeah i'm good thank you for asking good okay i appreciate it thanks good um so um so <laughs> um so uh there was an award show that i'm not going to talk about in depth um but it was the mtv vmas and um shout out to k-pop for making the vmas something that people actually tune in for again <laughs> I'm just kidding. They were tuning in for people like Taylor Swift and stuff. <laughs> Taylor Swift, who just finished like this big ass tour around the country and is like, oh, I'm going to go come and collect my like 15 w awards I've won or whatever. <sighs> like, Rest woman. You just finished your tour. Congrats to her. Right. That's it crazy. looks awesome. And I'm not really that big of a Swifty or anything. No, I'm not either. But it looked elaborate and awesome and huge. I'm not hating. Yeah. But I know those tickets were also like a ridiculous amount. I mean, for that, it seems like you get what you pay for, but also it's just like, I don't know. I think you do get what you pay for. She's Mega got like an, extra, like an extravagant like stage show, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? Yeah. So. Yeah. I think Beyonce's, I mean, probably the same also. Yeah. It's like. You go you, for the experience. Like. Yes. Um. So, but the VMAs happen and Taylor Swift won a bunch, but a lot of K-pop acts won a bunch too. So I guess this is going to kind of be my intro into the K-pop corner very oops, <laughs> a very short k-pop corner because honestly not a lot's happening in k-pop right now which is fine um that's fine so a lot of k-pop acts won um including uh blackpink and stray kids and txt um and stray kids also performed oh txt performed also um i saw that yeah, I've been watching all the Stray Kids interviews because they have the two Aussies um, just doing all like the, the speaking and stuff. And I love their accents. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, yeah, Stray Kids won um, for best K-pop group. Blackpink won for best general group, I guess. Um, TXC won for whatever a push performance is. It's like a performance award, I guess. Wait, Blackpink, uh, the the group where the members haven't renewed their contracts yet that might change um by the time the episode comes out there yeah they haven't renewed yet but we'll see i guess um lisa herself is reported to have rejected a 40 million dollar contract offer <laughs> from her company that's not because she knows she's worth more and you know what good Damn. for her good for her um blackpink won oh best choreography also so yeah people won a lot it is literally like Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Ice Spice, Taylor Swift, Stray Kids, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Doja Cat, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, <laughs> like Nicki Minaj. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, but anyway. <laughs> Dang. Um, during this, uh, the VMAs, though, there were some reunions, including NSYNC, which I was so happy about. 
I love NSYNC. I didn't see that. Wow. Yeah, they were presenting an award, and I think, no, they're not releasing a song. They could be. I think they reunited for the new Trolls movie, because Justin Timberlake is the voice of the main troll. Oh, yeah, that's right. So I think they really... Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So maybe kind of, sort of, um, doing a reunion that way, maybe? Okay. So, um... But then they did a real reunion at the uh, VMAs. Is that what happened? Yes. And then also I found out re- um, reuniting is 98 degrees <laughs> with Nick Lachey. Nick Lachey and the other guys that I don't know. Yeah. Who I don't. Gosh, <laughs> I wish I remembered the other three guys because uh, I really don't. God. Um, but what caught my attention. I actually first saw this on TMZ. My mom watches TMZ. Shout out to my mom. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> And they're entertaining, but it's also like they're in this they're they're paparazzi, so like they they're very shallow and whatever, so it's just sort of like Who uh, TMZ? Yeah. No. You don't, you don't believe it, right? Yeah. No. Yeah, the people who reported DMX's death three days before it happened. <laughs> who would have thought? Um so they actually had talked about this moment where um you couldn't hear the audio, but it seemed like Justin Timberlake and Megan the Stallion were like arguing. Cause she looks like very intense, like she's yelling at Justin, and he's kind of just laughing it off, and nobody really knew knew what was happening. But then she released a video afterwards because she got word that this <laughs> video was getting like a- a- attention, and she was like chummy and stuff with Justin Timberlake and stuff, and they were all good. And what actually happened was, um, Justin introduced himself to her, and she got like fake mad, and she said, "No, no, no, this doesn't count. Like you can't introduce yourself to me like this in passing. Like we got we're gonna talk later or whatever." Like. So it was, it was, but she did look kind of intense and stuff. So it wasn't like. So they were just joking with each other. Yeah. But we, uh, some, I mean, I don't even read lips, but you can tell that she's saying like, this doesn't count or whatever in the thing. After she said, that's what she said. I'm like, oh yeah, I believe it. And why would he go out of his way to do some video afterwards um, to clarify rumors if it wasn't true? So, <laughs> um, so this is something that people were like looking into. Yeah. Internet okay. sleuths. Um, oh boy. But this was after the VMAs. Um, the reason I bring this up, you might ask on my K-pop corner, because this has now become a J-pop corner. I'm so sorry. This is the shortest K-pop corner ever. (gasps) (laughs) Because a lot's happened in J-pop. Welcome to Tori's J-pop corner. Uh, I don't know if you're putting an intro in for that, but you don't have to. Um, I I may not. (laughs) Okay, that's fine. Welcome to Tori's J-pop corner. Anyway, the reason I'm talking about this, um, because the song she chose to use for her Instagram story video where she reconciled with Justin Timberlake was, uh, Hukai Mori from Duas Infinity, a J-pop group whose that song is known for being one of the most famous Inuyasha ending songs, like the anime <laughs> Inuyasha. It's so random. So we talked about this, I think, on the night of the <laughs> yeah. concert, right? Mm-hmm. That is the song that everybody always talks about waking up to like at like 4 a.m. Yes. Having to like go use the bathroom. Yeah. And, like that is on. You just hear, Boku Oh my God, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a couple others like that too. There's one from um, Namie Moro, which I adore, um, called Come. It's really great. And she's a goddess, and I wish she would come out of retirement, but that's besides the point. Um, Every Heart by Boa. Boa, mm. by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, Boa, who I didn't make the connection to as I was I was starting yeah. to learn about K pop, that she did J pop. And she's actually, she, like, haha, paved the way. She really did pave the way for, for K pop acts to do to get recognition in Japan. Oh good. She has a Christmas song called called Medikuri, which is like Japan's what most one of their most famous like modern pop. It's like uh, all I want for Christmas is you mm. the equivalent in Japan. Yeah. And it's so cool because she's Korean, so it's like really funny that like her Japanese song is like so revered and stuff. I love that shit. But anyway, a lot of my base knowledge of um Japanese music came from anime. Yeah. Whether I was actively watching or just waking up at 3.30 because I need to use the bathroom, I guess. And I'm like, oh, I didn't turn my TV off. Um, oh, I'm so pissed I slept through that new episode of Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> yes. Full Metal Alchemist, which is a weird show with theme songs because they had 13. The Larkin Seal song, right? Yeah. Well, yes. So, like, they had. That was fucking good. Four theme songs, four okay. original opening theme songs and four ending theme songs, which were for the each, like, 13 episode cycle. Mm-hmm. But the Lark and Seal one got so popular that it just became the first two seasons worth. So, the, nobody even knew what the first season was. Mm. Season, I say. I guess that is kind of a season. Um, and then Asian Kung Fu Generation with Rewrite, um, also a great song. Right. Yeah, it's a great um, song. That also took over the third season <laughs> song because it just got extended to two seasons it's very strange i don't know why they did that um because they didn't do that for the ending songs but whatever um 
It was too good not to use. I guess, but the other songs were good too. I liked them. Um, but they were more, I mean, Larkin Seal and Asian Kung Fu Generation were more like rocking and maybe appeal more to the West or whatever. Yeah. Um, but whatever, it didn't stop Inuyasha and their localization team um, to put uh, <laughs> Fukai um, Mori in the song, uh, the ending. And I'm dying to know how Megan found it. I want to know if it's because she really truly knows what it is where it's from or if it's just because she happened to find it and like it listen don't discount her knowledge of anime i i won't but i didn't know she had one maybe you don't know her i i really don't um i just know that a person who shot her is in jail now my my name spirit kindred spirit tori lanes i really thought his name was lenez i'm so stupid (laughs) it was like what (laughs) I only see it written down. So Lanez, that still gets me. Whatever, it's a fine. Whatever. Lanes. <laughs> She's gonna put Z's at the ends of our names. It's Z. fine. Um, but yeah, so I was that made rounds on like J-pop lover communities because like it's just it's a random song. Like um, it's a great song though. Like, like she could have really picked is. like any song with the word like friends in it or something like that. She's my best friend. That one I hear on TikTok all the time. Yeah. yeah. Or like older like people let me tell you hello tiny my best friend there she is <laughs> our live studio audience guest is back Don't, it's okay though we're under a different contract from the movies and tv shows <laughs> we can make content um <laughs> god i hope i picked it up i hope so too um i love that song yes it, Inuyasha's got so many good ones it's got a lot of good ones but that one is like a classic yeah classic really good one yeah um yeah they i can't think of any more than oh naruto had great ones too also had agent kung fu generation bleach had had uh, some... bleach was oh yeah bleach was good yeah there's an anime that i watched i can't remember if you said you watched this too called blood plus that one had really good ones blood too. plus fuck yes hyde did an ending the uh song for that mm. More recently, um, I, the anime I think of that have gotten really popular with their songs are Attack on Titan, like that first season theme song with the triumphant like, like everybody yep. knows that one. And then um, Oshinoko. That one is so fucking that good. That idol song is everywhere. It's so goddamn good. Yeah. Um, My wife loves fucking Oshinoko. I, I want to watch it with her. Yeah, I want to watch it too. Because um, I've heard it's really good. I've been buying manga for the library on it. So, um, but they're taking forever to do the translation. So they're only on volume three right now. My favorite one from Bl- Plus actually was um, I'll uh, it's from Hitomi Takahashi. I forget what it's called. Aozora no Namida. That one's a good one. Um, but anyway, that one Death Note had some good ones. Um, yes. Nightmare, uh, Visual K Group, which is awesome. And um, then, <laughs> it is awesome. Uh, and Maximum the Hormone, also really great. Yes. So, yeah, um, really shaped how I knew about it. Because it had all pretty much all genres of any kind of music. It wasn't mm-hmm. limited to, like, pop or whatever. And it's really great. So New job my, is. Yes. Oh, oh, my God. I didn't even <laughs> talk about that. Cowboy Bebop, which I haven't seen. Sorry. Um, but I'm, I'm going too soon. I know that one has really good music, too. Um, when you start watching it, let me know. I will. Because um, it's probably like one of my top ones. Yeah, and um, yeah, Samurai Champloo. Oh my God, Nijobes, rest in peace. Such awesome music. Yeah. Um, and I love anything that's inspired by him too. I love that whole kind <laughs> of like modern traditional vibe thing. Right. Um, but anyway, so long story short, is uh, my head canon now is that Megan the Stallion is a closet weeb and she's you're safe this is a safe space if you want to talk more about your weeb tendencies you're in good company she seems like she'd be fun she does seem like she'd be fun yeah she's funny too yeah <clears throat> yeah she's awesome so so anyway that's that's part of my j-pop news the other one um changing subjects real fast um so once upon a time, I'm trying to think of an equivalent here um, in America. Maybe you, you're maybe better with this and you can come up with it. But there um, there still is, but I'm going to say was for dramatic effect. There was a company in Japan um, for it was only it only had male um, acts. Um, so boy groups, solo boys or solo men um, and actors. And it was called uh, Johnny and Associates in Japan. <laughs> 
because it was named after <laughs> what? What? Johnny? Yeah, because then it was named after the founder Johnny Kitagawa, mm. who was um, an American-born Japanese businessman. So that's why his name was Johnny, because he's American. <laughs> <laughs> not just not just because it was Johnny. Um and they, there are a lot of popular um bands that came from that company. Um Heisei Jump, Smap, Arashi, Cartoon News, uh Sexy Zone, which is such a stupid name for a group. Sexy Most Zone. recently, um King and Prince and Snowman. Snowman's become very very popular and actually Snowman? really Snowman? Like, yeah, I know. It's a du- that's also a dumb name, but they have really good music. I really like them. I'll have to send you some of their music. Um, has recently been revealed, although this is like, what's being compared to actually in America is, um, like Harvey Weinstein. Oh. Because he, Johnny died in 2019. Um, this is basically a family, family business. So his sister, Mary, Mary Kitagawa (laughs) took over briefly and then she also passed away. And so it's been taken over by his niece, Julie. Um, but it's been a couple of years. BBC, the news company, not. Lino's not blackberry company, not blockberry yeah. did this expose on decade like literally decades of sexual abuse that johnny would do to trigger i should say trigger warning um to his uh n- like trainees or like boys in the company and stuff because it was that whole power thing about like if you want more gigs like comply or whatever for decades and it was kind of treated as this open secret from japanese entertainment but the company was so big that like Speaking out would get you, like, if you were one of the victims, you'd get blacklisted or whatever. But um, there was this one person who, I guess, came forward. And so based on that, BBC did this expose on it. And the company finally, like, like it was pretty much like pulling teeth as far as getting them to admit that um, he that Johnny had done anything. Mm-hmm. But they finally admitted to it. And it's been this whole big scandal. Like, all of their acts are losing sponsorships like there are some big ones like um mcdonald's and baskin robbins and things like that like because they're they're very big um and julie the niece (laughs) resigned and she's passing it over to somebody else and they're they did some press conference because japan loves a good press conference and um the reporter asked if they were going to change the name of their company and they said they weren't sure and they might just keep it because it's like recognizable which is so stupid because it's named after literally a sexual predator. Like, it's weird. Like, if you're really going to change it, just change it to, like, another J-sounding name. But And so I do feel bad, though, because, like, the whole idea is to kind of, like, if you want companies to really see the consequences of their action, you got to hit them where it hurts, which is their wallets, and not buy certain things. But it just sucks that, like, these artists that had nothing to do with it are the ones who are, like, getting barred from like contractual money making things they were doing yeah because they had nothing to do with it um it was all johnny's fault it was all johnny's fault but it's been an open secret for forever so um actually gacked um (laughs) this is like very multifaceted gacked on twitter got like hundred like like thousands and thousands of likes on twitter for this one post that he made that said like that he finds it creepy that these companies are now just deciding that they're going to not hire any acts from this company when it's then when they knew like they knew mm-hmm. um so it's so basically seems, saying like they're trying to save face now and be like we're not we're not associating ourselves with this anybody from this company but like you right? said it's an open secret so everybody yeah knew but that so was Gap happening that and everybody was like oh my god you're right which is great Shit. i love that i really love that for him yeah um but it, but he's right though it is weird to like backpedal and suddenly be like well now that the public knows yeah we can't it would be seen with you Oddly enough, um, the one the one company that said that they knew and have not hired any Japanese acts from Johnny's and Associates is Nestle. Nestle has said that they had heard rumors for some time that they were like that Johnny was kind of a scuzzy guy, and so mm-hmm. they didn't hire acts from his company as for sponsorships. As a result, good guy Nestle, which I'll say never again. Very weird. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say there's so much wrong with that but But yeah so ever since the 90s he's been accused of um sexually abusing his his talent and stuff um of any kind of age but it was always (sighs) that he was so popular um that any lawsuit that came about would just get swept under the rug because they paid people out or whatever um he had money yeah so it would be things from like 
even like giving alcohol and tobacco to like underage boys to more worse stuff obviously but sure. um but yeah it, yeah the, the bbc documentary was called predator the secret scandal of j-pop which again is not really it's like very open secret like harvey weinstein and stuff did you watch it um i didn't because i haven't found a place where i could watch it got you <clears throat> but that's the big scandal going on in j-pop which is why i don't have anything comparatively with k-pop to talk about <laughs> I think it was fun. Oh, okay, good. I should have probably put that trigger warning a little earlier. Sorry about that. Um, but there's an estimation that literally hundreds of boys have been like victimized by him. So, um, so it's pretty severe. And I like it. It was like I said, it was kind of like pulling teeth to get the company to admit anything. They s- apologized to the victims, but they didn't outright say what they were be- victims of. Yeah, which is like so weirdly guilty. It's just bizarre. Like if you're, you can't be straddling both sides of it. It's like either he did it or he did not do it. Like it, it can't be both because you can't say, I'm sorry they were victims, but also the wrongdoings aren't true. It's like very, <laughs> like that's so weird. I don't know. It's very dumb. I don't know if it was like a legality thing, but they might have just been better it's, off waiting until yeah. they knew everything to s- give like one concrete statement. But they probably wanted to get ahead of anything that was going to come out or yeah, like. Any of the bullshit that they, <laughs> and so, they yeah, and they deserve bullshit. Those, yeah, deserve bullshit. They they should have done something sooner. <laughs> well, the problem is again is it's a family run company. Like before his sister and his niece took over, they sure. were heavily involved before they became presidents of the company. So, um, and I mean, who like there's a lot of current talent in the company saying like I don't I didn't know he did this or whatever. Cause, mm. So maybe it was like maybe more of a well kept secret kinda. But it's an entertainment industry and people talk, so I don't know. Um, but it's it really has pro- like been one of the biggest like companies in Japan ever. Um, it was also funny because until Johnny died, it's a company that was notorious for being very like having a big chokehold on um, like foreign promotions. Mm-hmm. They did not license like they would everything stayed in Japan. There wouldn't be any sort of marketing for anything outside of Japan. No social medias like that were common. Like wow. I think their most um, Western one was like Facebook or something. But then as soon as he died, it's like you get a Twitter and you get an Instagram and you get a TikTok. And so all of a sudden, the that that snowman group I said is really popular. And it's because they are snowman. able to utilize social media finally. Um, because it doesn't what, hurt. Like, why? Can... Why would you want to limit? <laughs> like, if you're a brand for money that... making, mainly. Like, well, there's region locks. First of all, like, there's some music videos that are Japanese region locked that I can't watch. Um, as American. okay. Second one is it's it's common because they still have such a heavy CD market. So they do like promotional. Like the reason that music videos in Japan are called PVs is called it's promotional video, and it's because usually it's short versions of the the video because it's like if you want to see the rest of it buy the dvd that comes with the physical cd and oh stuff like that. man okay um, i did not know that so it's very it's it's all marketing yeah um, and japan's one of the top three self-sustaining they don't do any streaming market. there right or or if they They're do they do very little just starting to to do it they've all they've been very they still use fax machines i mean we do here too but like we do here they too. use them for hey uh, hey <laughs> You know, she never wants anything to do with the podcast. With the podcast. Oh my gosh, we've got to make her a mascot, I guess. Sorry, Wanho. Shit. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, there's no harm. Like, you can stay in Japan. Like, there's no harm in being globally accessible, even if you have no plans of being global. I don't mm-hmm. know. There's, there's, there seems like less cons to it to me than, um, to than about like not being global than pros to staying just in your country. But, but do you? I guess, but. But otherwise, there's groups that are mega popular in Japan that if they were allowed to have social media, I bet would have also been popular outside. Arashi's one of their biggest J-pop groups ever. Um, SMAP had a, a variety show for like a couple decades in Japan. So like yep. very popular. A lot of the major broadcast companies have said that they're not going to bar any of the Johnny's acts guys. Because I think they're realizing also it's not their fault. So... Um, that's good. I don't want them all to be out of a job because of one person's horrible perversion. Um, but like, really though, it's not their fault. Like, you gotta hit it at the company. Like, it's it's their fault. Hit it 
at the company. Hit it at the wallet, kind of. It's a fine line between like taking away money from the company and taking money away from the artist, which is, yeah. So, so that's the scandal. It's ongoing. Every day I get news about a new company that's um dropped a sp- every one day. of their spoke. Per- yeah, literally every day, like a couple companies a day that drop spokespeople that are from that company. Um, except for Nestle, apparently, but. Um, there's supposed to be more news about how they're going to reconfigure if they're going to change their names or whatever, what kind of reparations they're going to give to the victims, um, which are many, uh, which, I mean, there's many, but there's only a few that came forward. Um, so there's just hundreds more that haven't. And I don't know if they ever will. They might be too scared to still fucking hundreds. Yeah. Cause it was from like when he started his company in the sixties, he was old when he died. (sighs) So it was more recent as like the mid 2000s which is gross because he's like i mean it's gross anyway but it's also like you're literally elderly like please keep your filthy wrinkled hands away from these people filthy hands in general but you know what i mean (laughs) wrinkled ass octogenarian (laughs) octogenarian ass hands (laughs) horrible but um i hope they get um I don't know whatever kind of justice Japan has to offer. It's not super a super stellar track record, but um, <laughs> I it's really not. Korea is the same kind of with their laws and stuff. I would hate to see innocent parties um, get blamed for something that was out of their control. So that's Tori's J Pop corner. Um, big big scandals uh, in Japan for and, Johnny. Well, he's dead now, so. And that's the only kind of sucky thing, too, is that this didn't come out until after he died, where he didn't, like, have a vice grip on all, like, that power anymore. It's like, oh, he died No now. justice for Johnny. Well, put it down to his bloodline, because his family still runs it. Yeah. She's, she resigned as president, but she's still staying as, like, a shareholder, which is weird. It's like, then you don't, and then you're not sorry. Like, if you were really sorry, <laughs> sorry. you would step away, away, mm-hmm. away. Away. So you're not sorry. Julie. What a bunch of shit. So Julie, Julie. So, and anyway, even if they didn't know concretely, this sort of stuff, like there were tab, well, tabloids, but there were publication tabloids in Japan that were talking about this, like, oh, for a while, for decades, pretty much for the last two or three decades. So it was mm-hmm. one of those horrible open secret things that got swept under the rug because of um, yeah. money. So, I mean, you were right to compare it to her, um, <clears throat> Harvey Weinstein. Somebody, so. yeah, somebody compared it. It wasn't okay. my own comparison, unfortunately. But somebody said that. I was like, oh, that is it. That's, That's exactly it. Yeah. So, Spot on. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it would have been, I don't know. It's just, it's just icky. I don't like, I don't mm. like, I don't like any of it. It's, it's horrible that it's happened for so long and just ha- because somebody has that much power, you can't say anything or you risk your career. So. So we'll see what happens, and if they really keep that Johnny's name, I'm going to uh, boom, boom, boom myself off the planet because that's a horrible idea. That's like, I don't know. The Weinstein Company, I think, dissolved, right? I'm pretty sure. I think so. I, I think so, too, because I think his brother also, not for sexual stuff, but he was also charged with, like, maybe money-related stuff. Like, the appropriate action really here is just not keep the name, or at the very, at the most, dissolve. Because all the talent that they have can go find other companies and they'd be fine. Yeah. It's the same thing like with the writer strike. It's like the companies need the talent. The talents don't need the companies, you know. Mm-hmm. So so anyway. You said it. Yeah. Power to the people. Power to the people. Um, so that's what I've got there. Well, you've got a lot because you wrote the whole fucking thing. Well, uh, okay. I didn't it's plan. been like oddly a slow week and you know, you were te- doing your testing the whole week, mm-hmm. uh, practicing up until the real the real deal. So it's been busy in separate kind of ways. Um, we I also think I don't think we thought we were going to record maybe today because of this we didn't think we'd have highly power. anticipated hurricane yeah. tropical storm that never happened here. So like a big branch fell down in my driveway and that was it. And it was like, maybe that's pretty lucky for where you <clears throat> for where you're at. Well, it's good that we ch- we had a big tree that was near the up the side of our house. We chopped down a couple months ago. Mm. Um, just a lot of trees. Chop, chop. And I like trees. Don't get me wrong. It's just like I know that structurally, like the like sediment and 
for us pine needles also they probably don't bode well for things like a roof so you know just statistics yeah. i'm basing off of nothing but actually this was um this hurricane was actually a good test, test run for your you got a brand new roof isn't that funny that like fucking just finished that shit too like last yeah. week and then all of a sudden can i just hurricane. say yeah and you got new gutters as part of the deal yeah can i also just say i love that um your siding also got done your like paneling some of it some of it did yeah Mm. because that was something that you guys weren't going to do originally and the people said but we want good pictures for our before and after so we'll do it for free i think that's awesome that is fun i love that that's great it's like oh for for free why didn't you say so free 99 bring it down free 99 free 99 had anybody said ever said that to you and when you worked in retail or was it just there's no price oh they did both yeah i mean like that's a very common one there's also uh there's also guess it's free that's a Mm -hmm. a good one oh uh it doesn't have a tag oh okay yeah let me just find out where you got it from guess it's free (laughs) (laughs) but anyway taking that off of that so did they just do the front because i know that one side of the house is good because it was sheltered by trees for however long yeah like and it looks pretty much brand new. Mm-hmm. And so the other side's a little more weather exposed. but So they they didn't do those parts because those are different kinds of siding. Okay. And I think it would just involve a lot more work. But it's so. cheaper now because it's just what that one... Because it's not the back of the house, is it, too? Or are you just doing the side? It's the house renovation. I interview. think you'd have to do all of it. Maybe. But you only need, you don't need one side done and the front's done. So you only need like half of the job. The whole house needs a facelift. You need the big it's, old facelift. It's and, getting there. The roof's a good start. Gutters, yeah. the the some of the siding, or well, I guess front part, not really the siding. Um, it's come a very long way. Yeah, it sure has. Yeah, so so of you in accepting this <laughs> inherited house. Doing great. Proud of you. <laughs> <sighs> so, well, glad that you got the new roof in time. Um, Me too. Even though it was kind of a nothing burger of a of a storm, but whatever. You gotta be prepared. Indeed, you do. You don't want to be uh, caught without like fucking milk. People always buy milk for fucking hurricanes and shit. It's like I bought that milk. makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense in a blizzard to me. Yeah. But like in the summer when you don't have power, it's like well, unless you have a cooler with a lot of ice. Like mm-hmm. we bought milk just because we had run out of milk, and I didn't want to go shopping at a separate time, but I bought milk yesterday. So <laughs> whoops. Oh well. Um. But yeah, there was some, I remember some old video about like some New England guy who was like, I gotta get the bread and milk. Oh, I gotta get the bread and milk. And I'm like, I hate that guy. That's true. But it's so true. It's and true. Eggs. It's eggs, milk, and bread. Um, And the good thing, at least about blizzards, is if your fridge shuts down, just Shit outside. stick it. Yeah, stick it outside. Perfect. It might even be frozen by the time you get to it. So Yeah. Uh, so, so I supposedly we're supposed to have a pretty big winter this winter. Is what it's said every year. The old farmer's <laughs> almanac says. The farmers said it's gonna be bad. I mean, it's gonna start tomorrow. Right? Yeah. Hope you enjoyed summer and Shit's here's over. some blizzards, snow. Yeah. Perfect. Well, if you are truly done and don't have anything else to say, I think we might be severely under though. Severely under? Yeah. We st- You're kidding. We started a half an hour and then the thing went off. That was like two minutes, right? I guess. Hey, we can end it when you want. This can just be the shortest episode ever because we were underprepared for well, this, think, but overprepared for the hurricane. I think it was going. It's only going to be off by about eight minutes. Okay. Uh, so thank you for watching uh, and listening for those audio files. It's the good kind of file. I, just, I always I feel gonna... weird because, like, it's meant to just express like a, a deep yeah. love or obsession yeah. with, but it's become I was, so yeah. It's become so perverted. I was by going it. right there. I'm like, it just sounds weird. Like, I, don't call me anything. <laughs> like, well, yeah, because there's like bibliophile for people who love books, books. and then, like uh, angliophile for people who really love England, Japanophile for Japan. So it sounds bad because of that one version of file, but it's really <laughs> just I think Latin. I don't know some root. File. Like, yeah maybe it sounds italian <laughs> um but but yeah so whether you're listening or watching we appreciate you thank you um if you like what you heard consider subscribing um hit the bell if you so desire but if you 
don't desire then go with your desire that's what i got <laughs> that was a lot but was it? it was very good oh good okay. i i commend you uh because i wouldn't be able to do it because okay. i i would never remember where to start like you start with the like and you get with the subscribe i watch a lot you, of youtube man that's how I, you do it i get like, it re legit youtubers i asked my daughter real quick uh i asked her if she subscribes to all the videos that she watches and she goes dad i always subscribe <laughs> I'm like, why? You're six. What do you mean? <laughs> why? What? Oh, my God. Why do you do that? What a sophisticated internet savvy lady. <laughs> I know. Jeez. All right. So be like um, Lewis's daughter. Yeah. And subscribe because you always want to subscribe. <laughs> you always want to subscribe. Um, And if you want to check out our uh, individual socials, you can find Lewis at twitter.com slash Unilumo or uh, Twitch by the same name. Um, I'm still not calling it X. It's now gotten mm -hmm. to the point where, like, sometimes the URLs I copied say X.com, and it just it just looks pornographic. There's no way I can just not think of X and think of it like... I know. I no one can. No, it's and so stupid. It just... Even the font looks... Yeah. It's just a also, mess. Also, Elon Musk came out with a... Or somebody's biography about Elon Musk came out yesterday. Um, and I opened the box at the library and I was just met with this stupid face, this stupid drugged looking face. I'll drugged? Talk. He looks stoned, which like, that's, you know. Do you? That's not what I would pick what, of my um, biography cover. Um, but that's fine. You do you, I guess. I don't know. I'm assuming that he got permission to use that picture for whatever reason, but this one. I already got permission to dance. He just looked like that face was greeting me as I opened a box like the, like yeah and he's praying too I don't know why he just, yeah but anyway um you know what he's trying to do here look innocent yeah, really. <laughs> was that it he was trying to be fucking Steve Jobs the, ironically the person who wrote his biography also wrote the Steve Jobs biography yeah Walter Isaacson yeah so hmm pattern parallel although it made more sense i think steve jobs is usually was usually seen with like a hand on the chin or something but elon musk is usually seen he wants with, to come off as intellectual which he's not elon musk is usually seen with his thumbs on his phone so i'm gonna back <laughs> russell brand this will help my credibility with the youth he just goes for anyone who's like being canceled anyways anyway um, going far <laughs> off track. if you want to see more of this lady right here the one the only Tori. You can find her at uh, youtube.com slash Azarats Flame. A Z A R A T H S F L A M E E. Ah, flawless as always. And then uh, twitter.com slash trippy desk T R I P P Y D E S U. Come watch me be, um, as you described, 0% or 150% on Twitter. <laughs> Because I just catch up all in like one sitting on like my lunch break on my feed and I retweet a bunch of stuff. So if that's your bag, come visit me there. Um, or if you want to see what we're up to on uh, TikTok and Twitter, we are there at Lemon Tea Podcast. Um, thank you for coming along for the ride, whether it's Twitter or X. Um, thanks for sticking by us. Or whether it's Susan or Neil, thanks for sticking by us. Susan or Neil. No one's taken over tiktok i don't think there's one single entity person is there um there is a ceo i think okay because i don't know them like i know like mark zuckerberg or um i don't remember what his yeah. name is unfortunately okay well as far as i know tiktok didn't change hands for but if they do thanks for sticking by us <laughs> uh we appreciate you um yeah that'll wrap it right that'll wrap it like a chicken caesar salad wrap that they sell at the mgm fenway is that what you ate no but i wanted to but i was also like uh, what has like kind of a dairy based dressing and i don't really want to go with that at the moment <laughs> so i got tots with parmesan cheese on them instead whatever it turned out fine as my dinner it was great good yeah all right well <laughs> here's to having better dinners hopefully having better dinners um living laughing loving <laughs> that was good that was synchronized <laughs> pretty cool living laughing loving um yeah I think that's pretty much I I don't know how else we can possibly sum this up. Live, laugh, love. In that order. Vote or die. In that order. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> in that order. <laughs> in that order. Yes.